What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Today, we're going to talk about calibration. Now, calibration is something that still to this day gets overlooked, and that's why you guys see so many topics on our podcast about it, so many videos about calibration, because it's important. The speed control has to learn the throttle output of your radio. Many setups, people just plug them in, turn everything on, and it functions, and that's good enough for them. But for proper throttle operation and for the speed control to do its job correctly you really want to do the basic calibration now hobby wing has three well four different types of switches all together there's the switch in the button like a normal toggle switch in a button there's the dual button switch there's the single button switch and there is the speed control that has no external switch it's built right onto it the process is the same for all of them. The basics, the step one, step two, step three is all the same. The difference is how you initiate it. If you have a switch and a button, it's a hold the button, turn the switch on. If you have the two button, you hold the set button, power it on. If you have the single button, it's a long press and hold. And that's the same thing for this. If you do run into any problems with your calibration, it won't start, it'll get stuck at full throttle, it won't do the reverse, whatever the case may be. There's a link in the description down below for the servo test. And the short there is, is that you essentially take a servo, you plug it into your throttle channel, you move the throttle back and forth and look at what the servo output is. Nine times out of 10, if a speed control won't calibrate, it's because there's some sort of output problem from the throttle channel. It's either related to a setting in the radio itself or even damage to throttle channels. I've seen plenty of receivers, if you plug in the speed control backwards into the throttle channel, normally nothing happens, it just doesn't work, but on a handful of RTR receivers, when you do that, it actually destroys the throttle channel but everything else works. So you flip it around, you plug it in right, turn it on, everything else works except for that channel. And it seems really strange and I understand that because why would it still do anything at all? But uh, doing that servo test, plugging a servo into the throttle channel, taking the speed control, plugging that into either the steering channel or maybe the battery slot on the receiver is the safest way. So that it just gets power, then you can move the trigger and look at what the servo does. That'll give you a real good idea of what your throttle channel outputs are. All right, so calibration process, you start with your transmitter turned on, you have a battery pack connected, should be fully charged, and you have the speed control connected to channel number two, the throttle channel on your receiver. Uh, long press and hold to start the process. The light comes on, it'll start to blink, you let go, it'll continue to blink, you tap the button once, that sets neutral, you hold it at full throttle, you tap the button again, it sets full throttle, you tap the button, or hold it at full reverse, you tap the button, and that sets full reverse and the output is completed. After that, you will get normal motor operation. Racing speed controls and a lot of the other speed controls, if you have zero timing or boost or softening, you'll get a blinking red light at neutral. That's totally normal. It's just to let race control know that the speed control doesn't have the timing turned on. And you see there, as you give it throttle, you get a blinking light. And as you get to full throttle, you get a solid light. Calibration process is the same for the switch in the button or the dual buttons, but I just want to show you just in case. Same thing, battery pack is connected, speed control is plugged into the throttle channel, that's number two. I'm gonna hold the set button down, turn the power on, it'll start to blink at us, we let go of the set button, we tap it to set neutral, we go to full throttle, we hold it there, tap it to set full throttle, hold full reverse or brakes, tap it again, and it sets full brakes and then we're good to go. And same thing, if the speed control doesn't have any turbo boost, it'll blink the red light to let us know so that, you know, race control. But there we go, we get operation. And so just as a, just to cover basics here, this is a just stock G3S. You see it's permanently in blinking mode, but as you give it throttle, you get a solid red light to let you know the throttle's on. And as you get to full throttle, you get a green light to let you know you got full throttle. Uh, the same thing works for the brake side as well. A couple other pro tips. If you do run into a problem with calibration, check that your neutral is centered. You might need to look at your radio's calibration if you have one of these fancy computer radios. The throttle pot that's in a lot of radios is a rheostat. It's like a dimmer switch. And especially when we race dirt, or even if we race mostly on-road, there's a lot of dust and stuff like that. And it'll collect on that throttle pot, and it'll make your neutral shift around. It'll change your full throttle output. And most of today's modern radios have a place to check that. They call it channel calibration or channel reset sometimes. And you can go in and actually look at what the outputs are, shake the radio, and see if that thing holds still. 
a lot of times you'll find that, especially even with a not that old of a radio, but if you're in dusty conditions, you'll get some throttle output problems from there and it's something that you may want to check out. The other one that I run into all the time is the speed control won't finish calibration. It will calibrate neutral, it'll calibrate full throttle, but it will not calibrate the brake or the reverse. And that usually happens because the brakes got turned down on the radio. Sometimes you don't even do it on purpose. Many radios, they have clicker knobs that are down here. So when you hold the radio, you're, you're bumping it with your thumb. And that is actually a brake setting that turns down the brakes in the radio's output. So you can fine tune your brakes while you're driving. The brakes in the reverse output are the same. So if you can't calibrate your reverse, a lot of times that means that your brake output has been turned down. So you can start pushing buttons and look at one, which one controls the brake or what's in some radios called the ATL, the alternate throttle limit, I think it's called. I don't know what it is. But anyway, that's one to keep an eye out for because that comes up all of the time. And then if you're ever super stuck and you're sure something's wrong, you can calibrate a speed control to the steering channel. On a receiver, the outputs to the different channels for normal stuff, this isn't universal, but for 99.9% .9 of the radio systems, it's all gonna be normal PWM output, and they all kinda use that same basic range. So if you can calibrate your speed control to the steering channel, but you cannot calibrate, using the steering wheel, but you cannot calibrate it to the throttle channel, you know, using the throttle, that's a good simple test to see if something's up with your throttle channel output. Now again, same thing applies. If you have your endpoints on your radio turned way, way down, it may not calibrate, so keep that in mind. A lot of times this is something you can do on a blank model or something along those lines. Do you guys like podcasts? Everybody loves a podcast. We do a podcast called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. We give away free RC stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Just look up RC stuff powered by Hobbywing or click the link in the description down below. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, you can hit us up directly via email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. And as always, folks, thanks for watching another episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time. <laughs>